Thank you, everybody, for joining. So today we'll, we'll, we will be covering how to know what stocks to buy for beginners. So I want you to grab a notebook and write this down. So number one, you want to determine your investing goals, right? So most people, um, as they advance, have three different brokerage accounts. And a brokerage account is basically the uh, app you're going to use to buy your stocks. So the first app they will use, let's say it could be TD Ameritrade, and they will go long term on, on this particular uh, platform. OK, number two, you can do swing trading and maybe let's say you would do this on something like Robinhood, for example. So Robinhood is another brokerage app. OK, swing trading, I'm sure some of you know and some of you may not know is it's not a long term hold, but it's not a day trade either. It's kind of in between. So maybe you buy a stock on a bottom room or sell at the news type of situation and you want to hold that stock for a week and sell it as it shoots up. OK, so that's kind of an, an example of that. Um, number three for a brokerage account could be like a Weeble. And let's say with Weeble, you would do your day trading there. And I like Weeble for day trading because if I put a stop loss in, I know it's going to trigger it. With some of the other platforms, there there can be kind of funny with, you know, letting you get out when you want to get out of a play for a day trade. Okay. So yeah, you have to determine your goals. So are you going to do long term hold only? Um, are you going to do a little bit of all three of them? And we can go into depth with, 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 with the three. So figure out what kind of trading uh, you want to do. And I would recommend for a beginner to do more long hold trades. For example, there is a term called dollar cost averaging. And so dollar cost averaging is the system of regularly buying a fixed dollar amount of a specific investment, regardless of the price. So to explain this in a way that you understand it is basically if I buy Apple and I buy five dollars worth every week, no matter what the price is over time, as the stock moves up, I'm going to make money. So rather Apple is expensive right now or it's cheap. I'm just going to keep buying Apple every week, $5 every week consistently, no matter what the price is or $10 or $50, whatever you want to do. Um, you're going to continue to do that every week. So that would be dollar cost averaging. And then maybe five, 10 years down the road after all that compound, um, uh, interest and as the, the stock moves, you will be gaining some pretty good wealth. Okay. All right. So number one, you got to determine your investing goals. Number two, you got to find companies that you understand. So for me, I've been in the healthcare IT sector for 16 years. So when I first started off, I would invest in things like United Healthcare, uh, Humeta, uh, some of the different ETFs like XLV and, and more of the, the healthcare stocks because it's something that I understand is the industry that I'm familiar with. So start off with companies that you understand. Okay. Now, number three, you want to determine whether a company has a competitive, competitive advantage. So, for example, Uber and Lyft are in the same realm and maybe you want to go with one over the other or maybe you want to go with both. Um, if you decide to go with both, what will happen is, is you're not really diversifying your um, portfolio, especially as a beginner. Um, and Uber and Lyft kind of seem to run on the same token. Um, so we can go ahead and check that out if that's true or not. So if we go here and I showed you how to do this, uh, earlier. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> type Uber in. 
going to type Uber in, select that, and then I'm going to do Lyft, and then we're going to compare the price action between both of them, okay? So we're going to click there. I'm going to check the price action over the last six months. So you can see they kind of move at a, at a similar pattern. So this is why I said that, you know, you can choose one. Maybe if you've done live before as a driver or as a passenger, you understand and like lift more Then maybe you go with that vice versa. OK, so again, determine whether a company has a competitive advantage or not. All right. And now we're going to move to determining a fair price for the stock. And so you guys know that I like to do um, analysis here. So we'll both of these up, for example, if we go one year out. Well, let's go five years out for both of them. You can see this was more the higher end of the spectrum. Um, Sixty dollars a share um for lyft and 49 for uber about here so right now you can see uber is really taking off so right now i would say uber is a little bit expensive right now okay lyft is probably a better investment right now because it's on a the downtrend okay so you can see a lot of times they move together but, you know, after earnings came out this week, you can see that Uber has really taken off. And at the bottom here, you can see over the last five years, Lyft is down and um, it has more upside to go. So you do your due diligence, you know, look at the, the financials. Maybe you'll see that Lyft may be in some sort of debt or something like that. I'm not really sure. So you want to do your research on that. So, but if it were me, I would do um, dollar cost averaging on one of these and, and kind of go from there. So do your research. All right. Now, what we're going to do now is go to Google and type in biggest market cap companies. And this is how you can find a good stock to buy. Now, good stocks to buy, I'm going to type this in, are called blue chip companies. Okay. So blue chip companies are like your Apples, your Microsofts, Walmart, American Express, 3M. We talked about that on one of the short videos the other day. Bank of America, Caterpillar, Chevron. These are your blue chip companies, companies that we know are going to be around, uh, you know, over the next, let's say, 100 years or so. And a lot of these companies, some of them have been out for over 100 years already. OK, so let's go back to the biggest market cap companies. We're going to click here. And you can see Microsoft is, is number one right now with the biggest market cap. Um, so if I were to start right now as a complete beginner, I would dollar cost average in both Microsoft and Apple. Um, they've been two of the heavier weighted uh, companies for for a while now. Um, NVIDIA, I don't know if I would go with that right now just because it's run so high over the last you know year or so. So nvidia i don't know maybe you can do a dollar a day or something but i wouldn't put a lot of money in that right now meta is on the higher end of the spectrum you guys know uh, that that's facebook eli Lilly recently had earnings report reports and uh this is another one i would dollar cost average in um tesla is a very good opportunity to go a little bit heavier so um you want to might want to look into that and when it runs it runs pretty quickly and it runs big now tesla um is one of those blue chip, co chip companies that are is that is very volatile 
meaning that it can move up really quickly and it can move down really quickly with a lot of value, meaning a lot of people are putting money, you know, fighting and tugging, making the price go up and down. So, but overall, you know, if your dollar cost averaging into this, none of that even matters. We know that um, Tesla is overdue for for a push up. So that would be something good. Uh, Visa is a good one to, to invest in dollar cost average. Uh, JP Morgan Chase has been one of the better bank stocks over the last couple of years. Very reliable. Uh, when it has a pull down, it, it always pretty much comes back. And not only that, the thing with bank stocks is you really can't go wrong because the, I mean, the government is not going to let them fail, right? We need banks. We need these financial institutions and banks are really, 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 really good stocks to invest in. Okay. Now we are going to go back here. We're going to look at a, a dividend stock. That's, that's pretty good to start off with. It's called CHSD. So there's Schwab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF. And what is going on here? Let's try that again. SCHD. There we go. So SCHD is a, a pretty popular dividend stock. And I'm going to go to another platform because it's not showing me what, what we need here. So we're going to look at the at the return you can get on your investment. And so, like I told you on one of the previous videos, if when you're doing the dividend stocks like Verizon, AT&T, um, 3M, like we, we talked about the other day, you want to get stocks that that don't move a lot. So you can see over the last month, this stock fluctuates from 7504 to 76. That way, if you ever wanted to cash out on the stock, you know, af after you made money on it, or maybe you never sell it, after you cashed out, you know, you made your, your money off the dividends for a couple of years or several years, you can sell them and you won't lose much money because they don't fluctuate much. Okay, and then over the last year, you can see it's more on an up, up, upward trend, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. Just keep dollar cost averaging into this over time, um, and you'll be just fine. But let's scroll down to the bottom here, and you'll see that the PE or E ratio is pretty good. Um, the thirty day you meaning you'll get paid every month with this one so every month you would get 3.5 percent um uh annual yield on your investment okay so we take out our calculator type this in so let's say we have a thousand dollars $1,000 and we're going to times that by times 3.0035 equals that. Okay. And then we're going to divide it by 12. So with a thousand dollars, you get about two dollars and ninety four cent. And then just remember every month, you know, the dividend is going to add on and add on and add on and add on and add on. OK. And so if we do. One thousand. 
times 0 0.0353, you're looking at making $35.03 uh, for the year. Now, obviously, if you had $10,000, it'd be $350. If you had a hundred thousand dollars, you know you'd be making what three thousand. So let's do zero point zero three five three. You're looking at yeah, thirty five hundred dollars for the most part. And you can see the more money that you have, um, the more of a return you get uh, every year. So don't be discouraged by by the numbers there. Um, just be patient, just keep investing, keep, keep a, a, a strong head with this. Now, for those of you that want to be in a more, um, quicker fashion to make money, we go with the spy, for example, and this is what I do a lot. This is the type of swing trading that I do in this like a 90 something percent um return on my investment every week so i'm going to go to trade options all right and so today the market has moved up pretty good it's at 495 and let's say that i'm bearish bearish means that i don't think this stock is going to raise a whole lot over the next week what i would do is what we call a call credit spread okay and so i'm gonna go way out of the money right way out of the money means that i am gonna go well beyond the price that i think that it can hit over the next um week or so so i would go with something like no lower than 505 which is ten dollars higher than what spy is now but to be safe you can do um you can do 507 so i'm gonna do a i'm gonna sell a call first okay and we're way up there so 507 right it shows you that you've got a 93.5 percent chance of, of winning money off of this but i want to be a little bit more um uh, risky so i'm gonna go 506 as my sale and then i'm gonna do a buy at 508 okay and so if i hit continue okay i'm gonna review the order and so basically I'm going to slide this over. Basically, oh, I'm going to show you guys everything in my account. So basically, it's going to take $200 for me to make $13.94. Okay. So let's do the, the return on investment on that one. And guys, remember, the big, the more money that you have the more of a return that you'll get okay so let's do 1394 where's our calculator so we'll do no i'm sorry so we're looking at about a 6.9 percent gain and now think about it a lot of people don't even get that uh you know in a year on their money so in one week and i wouldn't put a lot of money into this so maybe uh, wait till the market moves drastically up like it did today. Then you would do your call credit spread. And let's say the market went down, you would do a put cr cr uh, credit spread. Okay. And, and we can talk about how to do that 
on another video. But that's just kind of how I like the swing trade. I like the swing trade credit spreads. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll swing trade an actual stock or a single option. It just kind of depends. But every week I'm swing trading SPY because the S&P 100 really doesn't move heavy each week. There will be some weeks where they move heavy, but, you know, it's, it's, it's the S&P 500. All right. Hopefully uh, you guys got a lot out of this video today. I uh, hope I was able to help someone. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if this helped you or not. And I'm out. Peace.